the Department of Labor's 5,000 employees engaged in labor management mediation, fact collecting, making studies and recommendations to improve the lot of working men, women, and children. Wage earners of the nation could appreciate the work of the department in the light of the secretary's judgment. Booms and panics were once regarded as an order of nature. We do not now believe this to be true. We believe it is within our own hands to wipe out depression and make prosperity permanent. Within the year, three million Americans are ex-wage earners, unemployed. And the ranks of the unemployed are to soar to 15 million. 5,000 banks shut their doors to depositors now in greatest need of their savings. Many would never reopen. Private construction virtually ceases. Mills and factories shut down. Railroads come to a virtual standstill. Millions of Americans, men, women, and children, wait in the cold, on bread lines, in soup kitchens. The fortunate are on relief. The lucky work for an average of $3 a day take home pay. The 31st President of the United States takes his oath of office. Our greatest primary task is to put people to work. This is no unsolvable problem if we face it wisely and courageously. It can be accomplished in part by direct recruiting by the government itself, treating the task as we would treat the emergency of a war. Once again, if there was not now a Department of Labor, its need would be desperate in these desperate times. Empowered by Congress, the Department of Labor sets up emergency national employment offices. Based upon a department study, the Secretary of Labor recommends some form of unemployment reserves should be set up now to take the place of bread lines. It should be an honorable method of tiding over people who won't work and lack it. The president appoints the Secretary of Labor to head a committee to develop a national social security program which shall embrace and cover the hazards of old age, unemployment, the handicapped, and children. There follows the most comprehensive effort to improve working conditions ever undertaken by any nation. The Social Security Act and the Wage and Hour Act. Both originating in the Department of Labor established for the first time in history a decent minimum wage and security in old age. Unemployment compensation to replace the breadline the charity handout, the dole. Maximum hours of labor. A law to outlaw child labor. And the Magna Carta of wage earners of the nation, guaranteeing all employees the right to organize and bargain collectively through representatives, free from interference, restraint, or coercion. Single strikes get headlines, but hundreds, even thousands of strikes that never happen, thanks in large measure to dedicated personnel of the Department of Labor, never make the front page. Throughout its more than 50 years, the Department of Labor has been served by thousands of men and women who have shared the belief that America the Beautiful can be more than the title of a song. The inventory has come a long way from a bay horse named Mike and a stack of books. But the attitude hasn't changed. Nor has the name of the job. To foster, promote, and develop the welfare of the wage earners of the United States. Having known change and helped make it, the Department of Labor does not find in change a stranger nor an enemy. It is, rather, another name for opportunity.